do is try to build an appreciation in you in 15 minutes. So let's see if I can do that. Next slide. So this is a little bit about the symphony community. And once we have all the boring theory, we'll dive into some code. And I'll just keep doing some coding till they can serve us. It's a really fancy term, like defense injection, but it's a very simple thing. We've heard about it in quite a few things. Before I go any further, how many of you have used the new symphony framework? Can I see a raise of hands? Okay. A few. Alright. Let's hope that that will go up later. So first of all, Symphony is just a collection of over 20 libraries. They're all independent. A lot of them are not available in any other component framework, including Zen. Some of them are repeated. Uh, I've listed a few of the most common ones. And a lot of these components are already being used in big, big projects. For example, Drupal 8 is using HTTP combination as its core level uh, library to handle responses. And, um, could you go back to that? I just want to mention a few more of these components. The routing framework, the routing component is used to map, to map URLs or URL patterns to controllers. The form and validator components, those are my favorite. Those are used for all kinds of tasks you need to do to create forms, submit them, upload files, convert data. Let's take some third party components, like some Zen libraries or libraries from Propel, Elastica, Lucent. Google Doctrine, put them together, add a kernel, add some blue code, and then you get an HTTP application framework, which is Symfony 2. And Symfony isn't the only application framework you can make with these. There are actually several application frameworks built using these very same components. There's one called Silex, which is an application framework in one file. It's a microarchitecture that you can use. Dependency injection. I won't go over it again. We've only had a great talk about it. Just sufficient to say that dependency injection is a first class citizen in a symphony. It's used everywhere. It's used to inject your um, entity manager inside the controller, to, you know, to inject any sort of service that you want to use. It's configurable using XML files, like we all learned about, in the symphony framework. Alright, this is my favorite part. And um, when people ask me which framework is the best, I'm able to mention this. At least currently, this is one thing that Symfony has that no one else does. And that's a new feature that you only have in PHP 5.3, and that's annotations. Um, how many of you have actually used annotations in PHP or in Java? Okay. Uh, are they from in PHP or when you're doing Java work? Java, right? So those of you who uh, work with Java are will be pretty places here. So documentation is a little bit short. If you do a bit of Googling for help, you'll find blog posts, but there isn't any blog posts older than a year, because it wasn't out there. So you might find it a little bit difficult to go to where you can contribute, where you can even get paid to like answer questions on the framework. Okay. Few more learning problems. Like I said, it's a little bit of a steeper learning curve because it's using a lot of design patterns and other things which you might not get in simpler frameworks. But I think that's a challenge too. Okay, um, then on the theory, so I'm going to like, dive into some code. And what I want to do is set up an application in Symfony in five minutes. Let's see how far we can go. Can you turn on the screen test? Alright, to do any kind of core tapping, I do my favorite virtual environment, which consists of, is it playing? Consists of a command line terminal. Come on. There. An ID and a browser. With my favorite developer plugins. That's all you need. So let's start. We'll go we'll download Symphony. We'll unzip it. And we're ready to start working with it. I'm working in Windows right away. So you do the equivalent of Windows. This contains some useful uh, scripts including one to update your version. Source one inside the generate namespace. You can generate bundles, you can generate entities, you can even generate product methods to create, delete, update, edit all these entities. You can create form scripts, all through generated code. So here what I'm doing is an admin bundle in the expert namespace. Uh, I call that a little bundle and I just said yes to everything. It's really simple. So let's see what happens. We have a namespace experts, and we have a hello bundle with our 
I'm holding the structure for controller. It's hard to see what's going on. Okay. I added another argument called age inside my route. It automatically gets added as a argument to my method. And then you little bit of to mess around with it, doing something useful. And you can see how it can be very easy. I'm not, I'm, it's a hit on um, working on a desktop application. You know, I create an API, I create my mapping, I uh, take the argument, I can use my controller, all in one cloud without having to switch back and forth. I think this is really, really fun for really, really improved developer productivity. Okay, update my template, take the two arguments, and there you go. Each bundle should be independent of each other. Serving one function. I think uh, module, uh, modular structure and 